Cubism was invented in a highly collaborative fashion by Pablo Picasso and Georges Braque. Their collaboration was intense in a way not seen in the history of art before, especially between 1908 and 1912. They were almost in daily contact. The first style of Cubism is called Analytic Cubism. Analytic Cubism was invented by Pablo Picasso and Georges Braque during the winter of 1909 and 1910 and lasted until 1912. Analytic comes from the idea of analyzing objects and spaces to come up with the basic geometric parts and then depict these three-dimensional parts on a two-dimensional surface. Colors in these paintings were drastically subdued and were nearly monochromatic. An early example would be Picasso's Three Women from 1907 to 1908. The women here seem to be a continuation of the three women in the Demoiselles d'Avignon. They are different from their predecessors in that they appear chiseled from red sandstone. Their monumentality is striking. The faces exhibit parallels to African masks, some of which Picasso had seen in the Ethnographic Museum in Paris. But more important is the rendering of space. With analytic cubism, Braque and Picasso tried to develop a new system for depicting space. In 1908, Braque spends his summer in Lestac and comes home with a number of brown and green landscape paintings that show houses in the shape of cubes stacked on top of each other. Picasso is astounded and mentions that Braque came home with paintings of boxes. A year later, in 1909, Picasso spent the summer in Horta de Ebro, from which he returned with a number of landscape paintings, eerily similar to Braque's. He paints in a pale beige and gray and piles together boxy houses, which seem to recede and protrude from the surface. An intense play of light and shade enhances this effect of spatial oscillation. We see a mass of shimmering prismatic forms. As time progresses, we will see that the forms become increasingly smaller and more fragmented. Here is another example of analytic cubism. This is a violin and palette from 1909-1910 by Georges Braque, which shows objects that are still recognizable, but they are fractured into multiple planes as well as a space around them. In the image, you can see the violin sheets of music and the artist's palette, but they are seen from multiple angles, broken into geometric shapes that come together to create the whole. His solution is much more radical than any of Picasso's paintings of the same time period. Picasso's girl with a mandolin, Fanny Tellier, from 1910, belongs to a series of portraits the artist produced that year. We still see the rounded forms of the girl, again also in a very muted color palette. Another one would be his portrait of the German art dealer Daniel Henry Kahnweiler. The fragmentation of forms is increased and the sitter seems to dissolve into the background. Picasso is still able to capture a likeness of the sitter, despite the fragmented facets of spatial units. Color is kept at a bare minimum. In 1911, the artists begin to incorporate lettering into their paintings. An example would be Georges Braque's The Portuguese, or The Immigrant, from 1911. Soon, Picasso will do the same in his works. But where will they go when fragmentation meets an unmanageable maximum? The answer is simple. They will go into a new direction 
This new direction is called synthetic cubism.